Welcome back to the final episode in this series of the Mars Hydro SP250 and the Pepper Plant pH test. So today in this episode we are not going to be tasting any peppers. If you haven't watched the last episode, that's when I tasted the peppers. In this episode what we're going to be doing is counting up the peppers on each plant and weighing them. And we're going to be weighing the roots as well and just taking a look at those also. And at the end of this video, you will be able to see the time lapse of this entire grow. So let's just get to the easiest thing, smell. All right, here's the one with the pH of 7.5. Let's just take a look and see what these look like. And the roots look pretty healthy. Let's have a whiff. And they smell healthy as well. Nice and healthy. All right, this is the one that's a pH of 5.5. Uh, these roots look um, they look about the same uh, there's a little more coloration on these the a little more brown coloration compared to the 7.5 and let's see how it smells here mm. it doesn't smell bad at all it has a little bit different smell I uh, can't really describe the difference maybe slightly like a sweeter smell I, I don't really think it matters though uh, this is the one that's a pH of 6.5. see here. And these look pretty much the same as the 5.5. See how they smell? And they smell pretty much the same. Okay, so really the difference between these roots uh, is the ones that were growing in the pH of 7.5 maybe are in a little better condition. Uh, I don't really know for sure if I would say it's better. Um, but if you were to open that up and look at it and smell it and compare it to these, one person's probably going to say for sure that that looks like the healthier plant. Although most people aren't going to be growing anything in a pH of 7.5 most of the time. All right, so let's get over to the weight. All right, here is the harvest from all three plants. And I did have them separated, but there is absolutely no differences between these peppers. And I wrote down the information right here. And this is very interesting, so let me explain. So the pH of 5.5 grew a total of 25 peppers, and the total weight of those 25 was 479 grams. The pH of 6.5 grew 24 peppers, and a total weight of 430 grams, and the pH of 7.5 grew a total of 23 peppers at 423 grams. Now you can see the trend here, obviously, the weight is going down, the quantity is going down, but there's more to it than just the amount and the total weight. So if we take a look at the average weight per pepper, you can see that the highest average weight per pepper at 18.7 grams per pepper was a pH of 5.5. The lowest was a pH of 6.5, so we're still acidic and there's not much of a difference between these two pHs. And then the next one here at 7.5 was slightly heavier in weight at an average of 18.3 grams per pepper. So if you looked at this you would say well one pH definitely is doing better than another pH but if you consider this one simple concept the difference in weight between all of these is one pepper or even half a pepper that's it. So taking all that information and knowing that you could basically say that there is no difference no real difference between all of these different plants grown at these different pH levels. I hope that helps everyone, but let, we're going to take a look at the roots here. We're going to weigh them and see if there's any difference in weight. And anyone who knows thing, anything about growing plants knows that the larger the plant is, the larger the root system is. It scales up with the plant. So whatever plant is the largest is going to have the most weight in roots. But we're going to take a closer look at that and see if we can get kind of a, a better look at an overall of what kind of what's going on. In here are the roots all squeezed of their water. And you can clearly see that this one over here is a larger ball. This is obviously not what they looked like in containers as you just balled up from my hand squeezing them. But anyways, the pH of 5.5, the root ball weighed 97 grams pH of 6.5, the root ball weighed 100 grams, so these two are pretty much the same, and you can clearly see here that although the plant sizes were very similar, according to the root ball, 
uh, this was the biggest difference between the average weight per pepper. So just these two pH levels here, one point difference, made the difference in this. Now, that might not be directly related to the pH because if we look at this ball here, the larger one, that one weighs 126 grams for the pH of 7.5, and this one had basically the average weight between these two. Least amount of peppers, but more average per, more, more weight per pepper. Um, yeah, it's really hard to look at these results and, and make any kind of conclusion to this because everything kind of counteracts something else. Size of the plant, size of the root ball, average weight per pepper, quantity, and total weight. These are all within a very close ballpark to each other, just looking at these pH, different pH levels. And you can clearly see that the bigger plant, just because this, or as you say, at least the bigger root ball, uh, didn't have the most weight per pepper. It was the one with the least pH, but this was the smaller plant. So maybe this put more energy into uh, plant growth rather than fruiting. I'm not gonna try to speculate it because all I'm doing is looking at these numbers and saying there really isn't much of a difference in these different pHs. You don't need to be that finicky about how you do your pH levels uh, when you're just a home grower. It's not gonna make a huge difference. Now, if you're doing it on an industrial scale, commercial scale, if you're trying to make money off of it, obviously you want the most uh, cost benefit, the most efficiency. You want the highest amount of yield, the least amount of cost. So that might matter in that case. But in this case, I'm hardly seeing a difference, at least not with these types of plants or these type of pepper plants, at least. Um, when I grew the lettuce in the different pH levels in the other video, which will be linked right up here if you haven't seen it, um, there obviously was a difference in the amount of total weight per plant, but we also had a wider range of pH. We had a pH of 4.5, 6.5, and 8.5. It was a much broader range. Now, no one's growing anything at a pH of 8.5. That was just, just for a test, just to see what happens. But in a pH of 4.5, it's common for your solution to become that acidic if you don't tend to it, because it can become acidic, more acidic over time, and it will. So that's a common scenario. But a pH of 7.5 and 8.5, not really. 6.5, 5.5, and 4.5 is what you're going to see. Because you start out with this, it'll go down to this eventually, and eventually go down to 4.5 if you aren't monitoring or changing your solution or anything like that. So that's going to about wrap it up for this series with the Mars Hydro. And actually, with the Mars Hydro SP250 compared to the QG LED grow lights I used in the past for these same pepper plants, I had about the same amount of peppers with those. So this light from Mars Hydro certainly has my approval. Um, very happy with it, it's worked out well, it has the right spectrum. And I will be comparing this light to other lights in the future, so just make sure you stay subscribed because we're gonna be doing that. But for now, we're gonna be moving on to the Max Bloom versus the High Bay Season 2. We're gonna be growing these same pepper plants under each one of those lights, and we're gonna see what kind of results we get with that, that type of lighting. So thank you for watching. That's it for this episode. I'm going to see you in the next series.